Welcome to day five of our daily scripture reading. Today we're going to be reading the entire chapter of Genesis chapter 4 and the book of Jubilees chapter 4 verses 1 to 12. This is dealing with Cain and Abel, or in the original Hebrew names, Cain and Avel. Okay, let's start out here with um, Genesis chapter 4. The man knew Eve, his wife. Again, here we've got the man is speaking about Adam or Adam. So anywhere we see uh, where it says a man knew a woman in, in the scriptures, it means intimate relations. So we're talking about Adam here having, having intimate relations with Eve. And it says here, she conceived and gave birth to Cain and said, I have gotten a man with Yahuwah's help. Again, she gave birth to Cain's brother, Avail. Avail was the keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. As time passed, Cain brought an offering to Yahuwah from the fruit of the ground. Avail also brought some of the firstborn of his flock and its fat. Yahuwah respected Avail and his offering, but he didn't respect Cain and his offering. Now, here again, a lot of people don't understand why Yahuwah respected Avail's offering, but not Cain's offering. Why did, why did God like Abel's offering, but not Cain's offering? And a lot of people just think, well, you know, God had favorites. God played favorites here. He liked Abel, but he didn't like Cain. But let's look deeper into this scripture and we'll see what actually the reason was. Okay, so it says here, as time passed, Cain brought an offering to Yahuwah from the fruit of the from the fruit of the ground. So Cain just brought, or Cain just brought an offering from the fruit of the ground. Just just brought an offering from the fruit of the ground. Okay, nothing special. Okay. But it says Abel or Avail brought also brought of the firstborn of his flock and its fat. Okay. So Avail brought the firstborn, the best, with its fat, the best. Whereas Cain didn't bring the best. He just brought an offering. It just you know, just, oh, here you go, kind of thing. Whereas Abel was very respectful of Yahuwah. Abel was very respectful in his offering. Now, we can take this even a level deeper in the spiritual realm and say this, that Abel had a revelation, had a spiritual, had spiritual insight. So why would Abel even bring uh, one of his lambs anyway? For, you know, he could have brought anything as an offering to God. Now, we talked about this in, in, the, in our previous studies. Why did they even bring a sacrifice? Why did they even bring an offering? How, what even gave them the, the, the idea that, an, that Yahuwah wanted an offering? Well, Abel here in context had a spiritual revelation. He saw the lamb, okay? He knew the Torah, okay? He followed the laws and the rules as recorded by Moshe, as recorded by Moses, okay? You need to understand when Moses wrote down the Torah, the guidelines, the instructions, the laws, the rules of God and all this kind of thing, it wasn't, that wasn't the beginning of the Torah. That wasn't the beginning of God's laws and his ways. That wasn't the beginning at all. That was just when Moshe wrote it down, okay? It was in existence long before then because the law or God's word that Moshe wrote down is, is in fact, God's word. And God's word is eternal. There's no beginning, no end to it. It is eternal. As it says in Psalm 119, you know, thy word is forever settled in heaven. It's forever settled in heaven. It's not temporary. It's not, you know, it's not like a season that passes. It is permanently eternal. Okay, so Abel had a revelation of God here. He had an, he had insight into the Torah of God. And, and I believe that, you know, Adam and Eve also did. Cain also did. Cain also did. Because again, why would they even bring an offering to God? How, why would they even know that, that Yahuwah wanted an offering? Yeah, I mean, let alone exactly how to offer that sacrifice. 
So Abel not only knew that God wanted an offering, but he also knew exactly what Yahuwah wanted. He wanted the firstborn lamb and its fat, just as the Torah prescribes, just as Moshe wrote down. Okay? Whereas Cain, he didn't bring, he should have brought, according to the Torah, he should have brought, you know, the, the first fruits of, of the ground. He did not. He just brought any old thing. <laughs> Maybe it was the last of the season. Maybe it was the the worst of the of the crops that he brought in. Or maybe it was just, you know, it's just no respect whatsoever here. That is why Yahuwah had favor on Avail's offering, but not Cain's offering. Okay? That is why. Not because he just liked Abel better, just simply because of that but because that Abel actually obeyed God. Abel actually did what the Torah, you know, commanded of him. Even though, again, it, we don't have any, you know, record of the Torah actually being in print, but it was known of them. I mean, how was it known? By the Spirit, uh, by, by Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve walked and talked with God. Do you think that God would not say anything about his ways and his laws and what he expected of them? Of course. God said a lot to them that is that we don't have written here. God showed them a lot. God, God taught them a lot that we don't have written here. And we see, you know, we see little clues of that as we read. Uh, and this is one of those little clues. So Yahuwah had respect to Avail's offering, but he didn't respect Cain and his offering. Now, Cain was very angry. Now, this is what happens when people, people don't go by the, the ways of God. They don't do what God wants them to do. They don't go by the laws of God. They disobey. They're disobedient. Obviously, Cain had faith here. I mean, or else he wouldn't, even, he wouldn't have even you know, brought an offering at all. Cain had faith, but Cain didn't obey as he should have obeyed and this is what happens when you when you speak to somebody about obeying the law of god they get angry they bring out all this stuff you know they try to come against you this is what cain did to avail he was very angry and the expression of his face fell he wasn't very happy yahuwah said to cain why are you angry why has the expression of your face fallen if you do well won't it be lifted up now, again, Yahuwah here obviously expected Cain to follow some kind of rules. Because how can you dif differentiate between doing well and doing evil without some kind of system, uh, rules to go by, guidelines to go by? So Yahuwah did give them guidelines, did give them rules, did give them laws. And Cain did not go by them. He did not respect them. If you do well, if you do obey... You know, won't won't you won't you be happy? Won't your face be lifted up? Um, but if you don't do well, sin crouches at the door. Its desire is for you, but you are to rule over it. Okay. Now, here's another wonderful little nugget that we have here in the scriptures. Now, God talks about sin as if it is an actual personality, as if it's an actual being. Uh, it's a, as if it's an actual creature. Sin crouches at the door. Its desire is for you. It wants you. But you are to rule over it. You're not supposed to be a slave to sin, but you are supposed to make sin your slave, okay? We'll get into this a lot more later on in the scriptures, that the scriptures say that whoever sins is a slave to sin, okay? Whoever does righteousness, whoever does what's righteous is a slave to righteousness. Now, we need to be a slave to righteousness and put sin under our feet. While they were in the field, Cain rose up against Avail, or Cain rose up against Avail, his brother, and killed him. That's first degree murder. Very interesting. Uh, I mean, Yahuwah here could have sent his angels to protect Avail. Why didn't he? Avail was a shadow, um, was a type of, of, of the Messiah, of the Messiah, of Yeshua. You know, it says later on that uh, it uh, uh, makes a parallel. It, it kind of uh, compares, it compares the blood of Jesus with the blood of Abel, the blood of Yeshua with the blood of Avail. 
Okay? He said, I don't know. So, you know, Yahuwah said to Cain, where's Abel, your brother? Where's Avail, your brother? He said, I don't know. Am I, am I my brother's keeper? In other words, he was saying, you know, am I supposed to be uh, looking after him? Am I supposed to babysit Abel? Am I supposed to babysit Avail? Well, you know what? Cain was the older brother, the eldest brother. The eldest brother should have been looking after the younger brother. Now, we'll, we'll see this throughout Scripture, where the older brother is coming against the younger brother. The older brother somehow turns against the younger brother. We see this with Esau and Jacob. We see this with the, the prodigal son and his elder brother. We see this with Eliab and Daud, David. We see this throughout Scripture where the, the older brother seems to be the adversary, whereas the younger brother is the one that is the righteous one here. Now, now that, that's not always the case, okay? That's not always the case, but it seems like that happens a lot here, okay? That tends to happen. Verse 10, Yeshua said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. Wow. The voice of your brother's blood cries to me to the, uh, from the ground. Now, that's pretty powerful. Uh, Avail didn't even have to open, a, open his mouth and speak. He didn't have to be alive to speak. The voice of the blood cried to Yahuwah from the ground. Now, you are cursed because of the ground which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. From now on, when you till the ground, it won't yield its strength to you. In other words, it won't yield bountiful crops. It won't yield plent plentiful crops and prosperous you know, returns. It won't yield its strength to you. You will be a fugitive and a wanderer in the earth. Cain said to Yahuwah, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me out today from the surface of the ground. I will be hidden from your face, and I will be a fugitive and a wanderer in the earth. Whoever finds me will kill me. Yahuwah said to him, Therefore, whoever slays Cain, vengeance will be taken on him sevenfold. Sevenfold, meaning if whoever kills Cain, they will pay seven times over. And it doesn't literally mean seven times, you know, in a literal technical sense. Sevenfold means just like uh, all. Like it's 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 a it's an all-encompassing number. It's like you know, might as well say seven million times over, okay, or a million times over, okay. Yahuwah appointed a sign for Cain so that anyone finding him would not strike him. So. Yahuwah did listen to Cain's uh, whinings here uh, about his punishment, and he did protect him. Isn't that interesting? God protected Cain here. Uh, and we talked about how God did not protect Avail. Cain left Yahuwah's presence. Okay, here we are where the presence of God is actually in a geographical location where you can enter it and you can leave it. Okay? So the presence of God is not always in the same place, always everywhere at the same time like most Christians believe. The presence of God is, is, it can be in a certain geographical location, in a certain location where you can come into the presence and you can leave the presence. You know, if that weren't the case, why would Moshe, why would Moses pray, oh Lord, don't send us anywhere unless your presence goes with us, okay? Do you think he's so stupid that he, that he didn't know that God was everywhere at the same time? No. A lot of people today are so stupid thinking that God is everywhere at the same time. That's not what the scriptures teach. You know, um, a lot of people quote uh, from the Psalms saying, you know, everywhere I go, you're with me. You know, if I go to heaven, you're there. If I go to hell, you're there. This is David speaking. This is the anointed of God. This is one who carries the presence of God. This isn't just your average Joe Blow that just comes off the street and, and God's with him everywhere he goes. No, you need to take it in context. Know who's speaking, okay? And know that it doesn't apply to everybody, okay? So not everybody can go every, anywhere and say God's presence is there. No, okay? David said that, yes, because he has the presence. He has the anointing of God but not so with everybody. And we'll come to that again later as we read in the scriptures. 
And this is the book of Genesis, by the way. This is the book of Genesis saying that Cain left Yahuwah's presence. Cain left the presence of God. Okay, so the presence of God is not everywhere. And, and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain knew his wife, again, intimate relations. She conceived and gave birth to Enoch. He built a city and named the city after the name of his son, Enoch. Erod was born to Enoch. Erod became the father of Mahuyael. Mahuyael became the father of Mathushael. Mathushael became the father of Lamech. Lamech took two wives. The name of the first one was Ada, and the name of the second one was Zila. Ada gave birth to Yabal, who was the father of those who dwell in, the, in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Yubal, who was the father of all who handle the harp and pipe. Zila also gave birth to Tubal Cain, the forger of every cutting instrument of bronze and iron. Here's the first scriptural uh, reference we got to someone who can actually make bronze and iron instruments. Now, I remember watching a documentary on Utsi, the Iceman, and the finding of Utsi, the Iceman, and the dating of that particular corpse, so that body that they found, changed the history books forever because Utsi, the Iceman, was carrying a, an, an axe, a copper axe. So they thought that the copper age or the bronze age was a lot later than, than Utsi's time. Now, if they would read the Bible and actually believe the Bible, they would understand that, yes, 5,000 years ago, they did have bronze and iron instruments. They did have forgers of these kind of uh, things. They did, it, the Copper Age was in existence 5,000 years ago. But, of course, you know, the history books don't go by the, the scriptures. They go by what they think that the, their scientists or their theories come up with. And again, for the millionth time, they've been proved wrong. Tubal Cain's sister was Naama. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zila, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, listen to my speech. For I have slain a man for wounding me, a young man for bruising me. If Cain will be avenged seven times, truly Lamech, 77 times. Adam knew his wife again. She gave birth to a son and named him Seth saying, For God has given me another child instead of Avel, for Cain killed him. A son was born to Seth, or Shait, and he named him Enosh. At that time, men began to call on Yahuwah's name. Okay, uh, here in context, and here also according to tradition, Lamech, actually it was the one who killed Cain. And so that's why he talked about being avenged 70, time, 70 times 7, because he felt guilty that he killed Cain. Now, let's go to the book of Jubilees and see what the book of Jubilees has to say about this. In the third week, in the second Jubilee, she gave birth to Cain. Again, in context, we're talking about Eve giving birth to Cain in the second Jubilee. And a Jubilee is a period of 50 years. The third week of the second jubilee would be 21 years plus 50 years. So 71 years she gave birth to Cain. And in the fourth week, another, another week later, another seven years later, she gave birth to Avel. So 71, 78. Again, here we got a little bit more information than what the book of Genesis gives us. And in the fifth week, okay, so seven years later after that, she gave birth to her daughter, Awan. Here again, we got more information than what the book of Genesis gives us. We got the actual, one of the daughters of Adam and Eve, Awan. In the first year of the third jubilee, again, the third jubilee would be after 100 years. So that'd be uh, 101 years. Cain slew Abel. Because God accepted the sacrifice of Avail, but did not accept this, the offering of Cain. He slew him in the field, and his blood cried out from the ground to heaven, complaining, be, complaining because he had slain him. Okay? I mean, this particular portion right here says exactly what the book of Genesis says. 
And the Lord reproved Cain because of Avail, because he had slain him. And he made him, that is, God made Cain a fugitive on the earth because of the blood of his brother. And he cursed him upon the earth. And on this account, it is written on the heavenly tablets, Cursed is he who smites his neighbor treacherously. And let all who have seen and heard say, So be it, or Amen, or Amen. And the man who has seen and not declared it, let him be accursed as the other. And for this reason, we announce when we, when we come before the Lord our God, all the sin which, which is committed in heaven and on earth and in light and in darkness and everywhere. Okay, so here we got what the book of Hebrews calls the great cloud of witnesses. We've got the angels speaking here in the book of Jubilees saying, we announce when we come before the Lord our God, all the sin which is committed in heaven and on earth, in the, in the light, in light and in darkness and everywhere. So it is the angels. The angels are the ones who watch and are witnessing what goes on here on the earth. Very interesting. So Adam and his wife mourned for Avail four weeks of years, which is actually 28 years of mourning. And in the fourth year of the fifth week, they became joyful, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bare him a son, and she called his name Shait, or Seth. For he said, God has raised up a second seed unto us on the earth instead of Avel, for Cain slew him, or Cain slew him. And in the sixth week, he begat his daughter Azura. Again, we got another daughter of Adam and Eve. Very interesting. Azura. And Cain took Awan, his sister, his, the, the first daughter that is mentioned here, to be his wife. And she bare, bare him Enoch at the close of the fourth jubilee. Again, we got all these years, all of these, uh, all this detail that we don't have in the book of Genesis. And a lot of questions that are answered. You know, where did Cain get his wife from? And in the first year of the first week of the fifth jubilee, that is five times 50 years in the first year, houses were built on the earth. So this is like 250 some odd years after creation, houses were being built on the earth. And Cain built a city and called its name after the name of his son Enoch. And Adam knew his wife, again, in intimate relations, and she bare yet nine sons. Okay, here again, we don't have this information in the book of, of, of Genesis. Nine sons. And in the fifth week of the fifth jubilee, uh, Shait took Azura, his sister, to be his wife. So Cain took Awan and Shait or Seth took Azura, his wife. Again, a lot more, a lot more detail. We got names here. We got exactly who the, the wife of Cain was, who the wife of Cain was, who the wife of Shait or Seth is. And in the fourth year of the sixth week, she bare him Enosh. He began to call on the name of the Lord on the earth. So tomorrow we're going to pick up where we left off here. We're going to dig up a lot more interesting and exciting things from the scriptures. Things that I'm sure you probably never heard of before. We're going to get into some very interesting things tomorrow. So make sure you come back to watch day six. Thanks again for watching.